Hello everyone and welcome back to another election analysis video. If you could please take a moment to please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Anyways, today, we're going to be trying to figure out what the state of the race is between the presidential election candidates of Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And the reason I am making this video is because there is a lot of mixed signals as to whether or not a certain candidate has an edge in the race right now. Poly Market currently has the race at a basically a 50-50, meaning no candidate has the advantage right now. And right now, on one hand, the Democrats are currently recording the highest lead they've had all year on the generic ballot, having a 2.3% lead over the Republicans on the generic ballot as polled by 538, which is good for the Democrats, obviously. But on the other hand, according to the same source, ABC, which owns 538, Kamala Harris is not getting the polling boost she was hoping for after her Democratic uh, National Convention that nominated her. And because of this, this spells good for Donald Trump and the Republicans since they are hoping to take advantage of Kamala Harris's weakness in the popular vote in order to take the electoral college votes from her. And basically what we have here is I have constructed an electoral map that has classified every state that's listed as a toss up by at least least one forecaster listed on the Wikipedia page for this presidential election. And basically what we're going to do is go through each forecaster one by one and go through each state on each forecast and try and see where they lean on each forecast. And hopefully by doing so, we can get an idea of who's leading the race. So anyways, enough with the waiting and let's get started with our first forecaster, 538. And right now, 538 has the race being really close with a slight edge for Kamala Harris. And what we're going to do is I'm going to look at where each state currently leads right now which candidate has the advantage and I'm going to fill out the map for you. So now that I have the map filled out, let me explain 538's state of the race right now. Even though they only have Harris having about a 10 or 15% margin over Donald Trump in their model, the fact is Kamala Harris is leading in most of the swing states and Donald Trump isn't really collecting any of them into his own column. And right now the race currently stands at 287 for Kamala Harris for 235 for Donald Trump with Georgia being a dead even toss up according to them. All right, so now the next forecaster that we're going to look at is RCP, and I don't even need to build a map because according to their polls, this is what their map looks like, 270 for Kamala Harris to Donald Trump's 268, another victory for Kamala Harris. Although RCP does take into account all sorts of different polls from like Fs to A plus polls, I figured I might as well include them just because they're a very popular news source among many political analysis. But anyways, that's RCP, and now let's move on to the next one, The Economist. And right now, the race is basically at a dead even probability of victory for each candidate, as we can see here. Right now, Kamala Harris has the slightest edge over Donald Trump, 272 electoral votes on average to Donald Trump's 266. Now, it is hard to specifically find a scenario where Kamala Harris gets exactly 272 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 266, but let me try and create one really quick for you guys. All right, I have now constructed an electoral map that fits the Economist 272 electoral votes for Kamala Harris prediction. All we have to do is give Trump the states he won in 2020 plus Georgia and Michigan, and that gives us the map according to The Economist. Now, I know this isn't likely since this is just an average electoral prediction from Kamala Harris, but I do feel like it does give us a good idea of where the state of the race currently is. Now, anyways, on to CNN. Lucky for us has already given us a rough estimate of where the race is. We can see their map right here of where the current state of the race is. And I don't have to construct anything for you guys. But um, basically, the race is a dead heat with each candidate having around the same amount of safe electoral votes. So that makes my job a little easy, no? <laughs> And now we have the Cook Political Report, which is one of my favorite political forecaster, except for Nate Silver, just because I read the Wikipedia page and their methodology seemed very reasonable to me. And so if we look at their electoral college ratings, we can read this and basically find that they have no toss-ups except the four Sunbelt ones plus the three Rust Belt ones. So yeah, here is the electoral map according to the Cook Political Report. Anyways, let's move on to a C analysis. And again, I don't have to build a map for you guys because they already have the map constructed for you guys right here. 235 relatively safe electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 241 relatively safe electoral votes. Unlike the last map, which had seven swing states, this map only has five toss-up swing states with North Carolina and Michigan being put into their respective parties' lean columns. So now we've gone over CN analysis's election forecast, we can go on to the Center for Politics election forecast. Basically, since their list is really hard to read, I'm going to fill out the map for you guys just to make our lives a whole lot easier. All right, there you guys have it. I've constructed a 
a political map prediction based off of what Larry Sabato has classified as toss-ups or lean states on his page on the Center for Politics website. And what we can see is he basically has the big seven swing states classified as toss-ups, as well as a couple leans or tilt states here and there, most notably Texas being put in the lean column and states like New Mexico and Minnesota being put in the lean column, which I personally think are safe, but to each their own, you know? All right, now that we've gone over Sabato's crystal ball election forecast, we're going to move on to the next election forecast, Inside Elections by Nathan Gonzalez. And again, his website is kind of confusing to understand, but the good thing about this is that I've read through it and basically it's the exact same as this map, which makes my life a whole lot easier for making this video. And basically you can see that he just is very vague in his classifications for each state. He's more worried about getting the margins and percentages of victory right than actually trying to figure out where each state goes because he has so many toss-up states. But anyways, this is where he currently has the race standing right now. All right, now that we're done looking at Inside Elections' election forecast, we get to move on to The Hill, which is honestly one of my favorite election forecasters for two reasons. For one, similar to 538, it shares with us currently what probability or chance of victory for each candidate is. 538 currently gives the race a 57% chance of victory for Kamala Harris, and The Hill gives basically an identical chance of victory for Kamala Harris, with them giving her a 56% chance of victory. And the second reason as to why I like The Hill so much is because I don't have to build another map for you guys based off of where they classify their states because they already have a map built for you. Here we can see that they have the race being almost the exact same as inside elections, except for Michigan being classified as a lean or tilt a blue state, meaning Kamala Harris is likely to take that state, which I kind of tend to agree with, at least where the race is right now, just because of where polling has been coming out of that state. But yeah, here we can see that the race is still anyone's race to lose, with Kamala Harris having a slight edge because of the higher floor she has from her safe states. So now that we're done looking at the election model, we get to move on to my favorite election forecaster, Nate Silver, based on his prediction published on his website, The Silver Bulletin. And the reason he's my favorite election forecaster is because one, he's not a journalist or a politician. As a statistician, his job is literally to just look at numbers and tell us what they're saying. Two, the second reason why I like him is because despite being a liberal, he talks a lot about possible strengths Republicans and Trump could have while running for office. And three, the third reason why I like him so much is because if you read his record on Wikipedia, he has been the most accurate mainstream political forecaster from 2008 to 2020, and even in 2022, analyzing the midterms. So he's had a very good track record so far. And that's why when I look at his map, I'm shocked, but I listen to him when I see that Trump is winning five out of the big seven swing states. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a map filled us right here, but we can see that according to his website, Trump has been gaining and gaining in his election forecast ever since about two weeks since Kamala Harris joined the race. And we can see that because of Trump gaining ground, he's currently the favorite by around 10 and a half percentage points in his probability chart of who's going to win this election. If we create a map based off of where each state stands according to him, we can see that Trump nearly wins the election over Kamala Harris, winning 287 electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 251 electoral votes. And if you ask me, this is honestly where I think the election stands right now. If I were to make a presidential election video today, this is honestly what the map would look like. Just because one, I trust Nate Silver's analysis so much, and two, the polls coming out of a post-DNC Kamala Harris don't look too good for her. But anyways, now that we've looked at every single election forecaster here, if we average out all of the classifications for each state, we get this map, which roughly tells us where each state is leaning or going towards at this current state of the race right now. We have four toss-up states, meaning they are classified as a toss-up by every single election forecaster. And those four states are Georgia, Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Arizona, which will honestly decide this election at the end of the day. But anyways, there you guys have it. I have just analyzed the current state of the race of the election based off of every mainstream forecaster and there's the video and I shall see you guys later.